What's up, my beautiful people? It's your girl, Lunatic Froggy. And today, we're going to talk about Unalivers. Serial Unalivers. Who had mental disorders. Now, I did some research, as I do. And we're going to talk about somebody who had borderline personality disorder and Munchausen's disease by proxy. Okay, now let me explain a little about Munchausen's disease by proxy, okay? It is basically you do things to other people causing them harm so you can get the sympathy. You can get the rewards and the praises. Basically, if you break your kid's arm, you go in and say, Oh, he fell down the stairs. Oh, my poor buddy. He broke his arm. Or, I don't know, doctor. She just can't gain weight. As you're feeding her diet meds. So she don't gain weight. Or you give her, take away her food. So she can't gain weight. And then you go to doctors. I just don't understand why she can't gain weight. I give her food all the time. You're causing it. You're causing somebody else's illness. So that way you get the sympathy. You get the rewards. You get, especially if you're trying to uh, use it to uh, become... A hero you're basically using it so you can get the praise even though you caused it now the case that we're gonna talk about that is or Christine Gilbert not Kathy what is she? anyways Christine Gilbert she was a RN. She, the people who knew her as a child, especially when she got into her teenage years, they noticed that she was, she had a bad habit about lying. Lying to get sympathy, lying to get attention, you know, gotta get that attention. She would fake suicide attempts. Oh, I'm just so sad. I, I tried suicide myself. She would fake these suicide attempts so that way she could manipulate people. Oh, well, you're going to break up with me? I'm going to suicide myself. Never would. But she used fake suicide attempts. So people would do the things that she wanted. Munchausen's. In college. When she, this lady went to college. She had to relocate after a psychiatric she was forced to do psychiatric treatment for a fake suicide attempt again she probably didn't get what she wanted called in an suicide attempt and she ended up going to psychiatric treatment so then she got transferred to a different college and again she had to transfer for another suicide attempt. So, finally, in 1988, she graduated from college as a registered nurse. Somebody has who has suicide, fake suicide themselves multiple times. Got a registered nurse degree. Now, let's get into her medical degree. 
because this is where the fascination of becoming the hero becoming somebody important came in this is where she did no no's so in 1988, she started at a VA in Massachusetts. Within the first year of being there, there was 250 deaths. 125 of them was on her time. Now, the odds of that is one in a one in a hundred thousand. Like, that's a very slim chance that you would have a record that high. That's not including all the people who lived, okay? There was over, according to the articles I read, there was over 700 patients on her clock that either passed away or ended up in cardiac arrest. So they started calling her the angel of death. In 1996, now she's worked there since 1988 in 1996 there were three nurses that really noticed her cardiac arrest on her watch go up but they also noticed the epinephrine now what is epinephrine epinephrine is a stimulant for the heart so it will be faster it will beat a lot of people who are going into cardiac arrest for a low heart rate will end up taking epinephrine okay so these nurses notice it they go to hr they're like hey we really need to investigate this because she's got all these cardiac arrests and the epinephrine's running out quick. Like, we're constantly having to get it. If you're figuring she did over 600, that's a lot of epinephrine. Now, she would put it in their IV bag. So, that means that all of the times that she was putting a lethal dose of epinephrine into these vets. And this that's where it really gets me. Because she wasn't doing this to children. She wasn't doing this to regular patients. She was doing this to the vets that sit, went out there and fought for us. She's doing this to vets. She's giving them lethal doses of epinephrine to cause cardiac arrest. So, once she notices that she's got an investigation, they let her go because of the investigation. Do you know what she does? She calls in a bomb threat against the three co-workers that called, brought this investigation on. So, she calls in a bomb threat. Not just against these three co-workers that called her in and was like, Hey, HR! Nah, she also called in one against her ex-boyfriend who was working there. Which he ties into this. Okay, so... She call, she gets released. In 1996, she gets released from her job. She checks herself into a mental institution. 
a psychiatric hospital seven times in a year she two years in two years she checked herself in seven times now it don't say why she checked herself in but I have a feeling that she checked herself in one to get sympathy because oh all these people are investigating me and it's so much stress and I just can't handle it and also because a lot of people with Funchausen's disease also knows a lot about medical and criminal what is one of the main things that they cannot try you for is if you're not mentally stable they can find you guilty and send you to an, a mental institution okay in 1998 she stood trial for the bomb threat to the VA for in re retaliation against her co-workers and her ex-boyfriend she was found guilty. The VA hospital suspected in the nine years she was working there, she was responsible for over 350 unalivings. Yes, you heard that. Over 350 unalivings. She was also responsible for over 300 emergency case scenarios which is where they went into cardiac arrest and they had to save them the prosecutor against Gilbert used these to get the attention it says she used these attempts as a way to get attention from her ex-husband or her ex-boyfriend because what's better way to become a hero or to get attention from a man is to become a hero right well oh my god he I had to jump in and save his life a VIA police officer which the VA regulates, the VA hospital regulates that there must be a police officer on site for all of these emergencies. Testified against her, saying she confessed to one of the deaths while in psychiatric treatment. But that got ruled out because it was hearsay there was no proof the prosecutor also said in 1998 she used a large kitchen knife in attempt to assault someone in 1995 she attempted to poison two people Now, they don't clarify whether these people were out of the hospital or in the hospital, but the VA hospital reported January 28th, she tried poisoning a patient. In 1994, she removed the breathing tube from a patient. Yeah, she removed a breathing tube from a patient. She is sick. Okay, in 1995, she abandoned a patient went and got a co-worker and was like oh co-worker we need to go check on these patients and waited until that co-worker found the patient in cardiac arrest to jump in 
So if that co-worker would have been like, nah, I'm busy, guess what? That patient would have would have been unalived at the hands of her. She in 96 she also made a co-worker who wasn't used to the defib paddles you know the click paddles she made one of her co-workers who was not trained on them to use them on a patient because she refused to use them herself She's like, no, I'm not going to do it. You can't make me. Like, what kind of sick individual is this? Anyways, let's continue on because it continues. Believe it or not. On November 17th, 1995. Oh, I was wrong. That incident happened in 70, 95? Not. 90. Yeah, it was all in 1995. On November ni- November 17, 1995, she did this. Okay. She, in 1996, she threatened harm verbally and physically against a patient. In 1981, this is even before she became a registered nurse, okay? In 1981, she scolded a child with mental disabilities with hot bath water That shit's unintentional. Like, you know... This poor child had to deal with being scolded by an adult. Good news, though. On March 14th, 2001, she was federally... Convicted of three counts of first degree unaliving, one count of second degree, second degree unaliving, and two counts of uh, attempted unaliving. She got four consecutive life terms. Now you add in the bomb threat. Remember that bomb threat. She also got twenty years for the bomb threat. So. Homie will spend the rest of her life in prison. But who's to say she ain't doing more in prison? Think about it. You're in prison. You're not going to... Like, you have all the availability right there because you have a bunkie that you can torture. I hope she is in segregation for the mental health and physical health of all the other inmates. I pray she's in segregation. This lady took 250, oops, correction, 350 vets. She severely injured because when you go into cardiac arrest, it really messes up your heart, okay? She injured over 700 vets. Now, they could not give a clear estimation of how many people she unlived. Because epinephrine is untraceable. 
they cannot trace epinephrine. And if you're stealing epinephrine out of the medical cabinet, they're not going to be able to know who administered it. So, that is the case of Catherine Gilbert. Kristen Gilbert. I always want to call her Catherine. She looks like a Catherine. But yes, that is the case of Kristen Gilbert. If you like this, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. We love you all. Have a great day. Bye!